to see today's photo, go to mtforchrist.org or follow me, M.T. Clark, on Facebook or Twitter. Good morning. Today's photo of a garden pathway whose brilliance has been increased by a vibrant Christmas light display featuring a tree covered in multicolored lights and electronic flowers lining the path comes to us from Bonnie Schultz, who shared this scene on social media last night from her visit to the Bell and Graf Gardens and Home in Theodore, Alabama. Well, it's Thursday and it is beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. So I'm sharing uh, Bonnie's photo to reflect the fact that Christmas Eve is 10 days away. And because I share pathway photos on Thursdays in remembrance of the day of the week that I first went into recovery and as a visual encouragement to all my friends to either get on or to stay on the path of Christian discipleship and walking in the spirit. I didn't just begin recovery on a Thursday after I made it through Pastor Bob Costello's Celebrate Freedom program at Rock Solid Church. I joined the leadership team and taught and eventually led the ministry on Thursday nights. It was in that first season of leadership that I became friends with and served besides my friend and brother in Christ, Bill Ham. Bill had gone through rehab in Florida and had a measure of freedom and victory over his addictions that he brought with him when he served as part of Pastor Bob's initial Celebrate Freedom team. And Bill had the distinction of being the only one from that team, other than Pastor Bob, to remain faithful to the ministry after its initial run. When Celebrate Freedom started its second season, um, Pastor Bob elevated me into service along with, uh, along with Bill and Paula Williams, who stepped up to be the woman's leader. Paula faithfully served Celebrate Freedom at Rock Solid until the end of 2020, and now uh, is teaching at Celebrate Freedom again, uh, as Pastor Bob started up the ministry again this year. Um, in that second year, Pastor Bob, like any good leader, intended to take a step um, and, uh, intended to take a step back and to allow his underlings to grow and gave us all the opportunity to teach the program's lessons. Paula and I were relative newbies, so Bill was given the duties to teach first. And I'll never forget his lesson for three reasons. One, because Bill was a nervous wreck. Two, because it was a good message. And three, because it was one, if not the only time that Bill taught at Celebrate Freedom. Uh, teaching isn't for everybody. And I think Bill's nerve and lack of confidence got the best of him. Although he was faithful in serving the ministry for years as an encouraging attendee and supporter of all who came, he chose not to teach at Celebrate. Uh, that's the way it was. Uh, we all have our roles to play in the body of Christ, and Bill served in all kinds of different capacities for our church, including serving at jail ministry. So it wasn't like he walked away. Although he had his struggles in maintaining uh, freedom, uh, his freedom at times, uh, Bill always fell forward. And I recall how he eventually stopped struggling and falling, and he grew into his freedom in what he called to be a uh, hundred percenter as in someone who was 100% clean and sober and committed to serving the Lord. We are all a work in progress, and sometimes relapse is part of recovery. But Bill eventually showed himself and others that it didn't have to be when you followed Jesus. Bill eventually became the person he hoped to be, the man God created him to be. And that first and only teaching uh, that I saw Bill give, he shared a story or an illustration that he had seen when he was in rehab. It was an object lesson that highlighted the past, the present, and the future, and used three chairs to make the point. In recovery, there are three people. Uh, the person you once were, the person we are now, and the person we will be, or hope to be, in the future. So, the way the message went, when Bill told us about the three people, and as he talked about each one, he literally sat down, in the chair and talked about what it was like to be uh, the person who we once were, who was a mess, angry, depressed, addicted, and who selfishly always chose the wrong things. And then he talked about the person we are now, the one who had been saved by God and who had been led to repentance, who was under a lot of stress as they had gone into recovery, but who had hope to be 
the person we hope to be in the future, uh, who rejoiced over making it, of being clean and sober, of being free, uh, uh, of being happy because they were free. Oh boy, I said it was a little redundant there. Uh, it was a good message, and Bill did a good job of delivering it. And even if it was the only message I can recall he actually taught at Celebrate Freedom, it was one that he demonstrated with the way he lived. Bill died a week ago, last Thursday, and today is his memorial service. I'll be attending to remember my friend. I'll be overdressed in my new suit to honor him. Because even though Bill wasn't always perfect, he stood up for the Lord, pointed people to Jesus, and tried to succeed in becoming the person he hoped to be. The person God created them to be, a faithful man of God. So let's all honor Bill Ham today by thinking about the person you were in the past, the person you are today, and the person you hope to be in the future. And let's keep walking and talking with God to follow Bill's example and become a 100 percenter, a person that surrenders all and gives themselves completely to following Jesus into the abundant life of freedom and purpose that God has for us to live. Today's Bible verse comes to us from the Quick Scripture Reference for Counseling by John G. Cruis. This morning's meditation verses come from the section on church discipline. And today's verses come from 2 Corinthians 2, verses 7 and 8. And the Word of God says, Now, however, it is time to forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overcome by discouragement. So I urge you now to reaffirm your love for him. Today's verses fall under the fourth point of our Counseling Reference Guide's resource section on church discipline. And that fourth point is, forgive and restore one who repents. Love him. Today's verse reminds us to be compassionate to the one who repents by forgiving and comforting them and leading them back into the family of God by reaffirming our love for them. Sometimes people walk away from the church one minute they are walking strong in the Lord, and the next minute they fall into confusion and sin and leave the fellowship of the saints. When this happens, they often don't come back. However, on occasion, the call of the Lord on their life is for real, and it compels them, even after terrible mistakes, to repent and go back to the house of the Lord. Rather than being cold and ju judgmental towards people in this situation, we need to forgive them and comfort them and encourage them to stay with us by reaffirming our love for them. People need God's love, and we may be the only ones that can give it to them. So follow the spirit of today's verses by forgiving others and encouraging them to come back home to the house of the Lord and to stay. As always, I invite all to go to mtforchrist.org, where I always share insights from prominent Christian theologians and counselors to assist my brothers and sisters in Christ with their walk. Today, we're sharing from God is in the Major, Reflections on Advent and Christmas by Diedrich Bonhoeffer. And uh, as I stated before, um, we're sort of off the Advent calendar, um, uh, but we're following this devotion, devotional uh, faithfully. And so today in the devotional, it's Advent Week 3, Redemption, Day 3. And Bonhoeffer writes a message called Becoming Guilty. And Bonhoeffer writes... Because Jesus took upon himself the guilt of all people, everyone who acts responsibly becomes guilty. Those who want to extract themselves from the responsibility for this guilt also remove themselves from the ultimate reality of human existence. Moreover, they also remove themselves from the redeeming mystery of the sinless guilt, guilt bearing of Jesus Christ and have no share in the ju divine justification that covers this event. They place their personal innocence above their responsibility for humankind, and they are blind to the unhealed guilt that they load on themselves in this very way. They are also blind to the fact that real innocence is revealed in the very fact that for the sake of other people, it enters into communion of their guilt. Through Jesus Christ, the nature of responsible action includes the idea that the sinless, the selflessly loving, become the guilty. 
uh, with Dietrich Bonhoeffer's little message called "Becoming Guilty." Uh, they also the devotional also shares these these thoughts from Bonhoeffer from a sermon to a London church on the third Sunday of Advent on December seventeenth, nineteen thirty three. And Bonhoeffer said back then, in eight days we shall celebrate Christmas, and now for once let us make it really a festival of Christ in our world. It is not a light thing to God that every year we celebrate Christmas and do not take it seriously. His word holds and is certain. When he comes in his glory and power into the world in the manger, he will put down the mighty from their seats, unless ultimately... Ultimately, they repent. And finally, from our devotion, uh, they share uh, Isaiah 1.18. And the Word of God says, Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. That's it from today's uh, resource. Um, God is in the manger. Devotion, uh, thoughts on Advent and Christmas by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and and uh, yeah, it points to our guilt. Um, you know, basically, but we our our guilt is is relieved by Jesus Christ, and um, that's some deep thoughts. So we, we invite you to check out and read through that uh, message uh, by going to mtforchrist.org and and reading it for yourself. Um, on <laughs> at the end of it, uh, sometimes Bonhoeffer's messages are a little unclear, um, and uh, I don't want to exegete it too much in case I, I I speak wrongly about his intentions and in, in saying that we are to accept our guilt. And I think that's just basically uh, you know we're not supposed to take our sin lightly, and that we are supposed to repent. So um, even though we're absolved over our guilt um, by Jesus Christ, we're not to live in sin. Uh, we are to turn and humbly, um, you know, and be compassionate to others too. I think plays into that. You know, basically that uh, you know, we suffer, uh, you know, through our love for others, and um, that's okay. And we'll accept their guilt, you know, uh, the guilt that they don't know uh, of what they're doing, or they don't know the truth of God's word. So we compassionately love them, and uh, in, in a way, we relieve their guilt. Uh, of that, but not ultimately. They need to put their faith in Jesus, and that's what this this podcast and this blog is all about: pointing people to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, to accept Him as Lord and Savior, and to do the appropriate thing and follow Him into the new life that He has for you. And that's uh, to share and show the love of God in everything you do. Um, and that's not just during a church service for an hour, or an hour and a half on on the weekend. Uh, it's being a light to the world and telling people the truth as often as you can. Um, last night we uh, celebrated our freedom at uh, Celebrate Freedom uh, Growth Group uh, at Star Point Church, where we read through the lesson on the Holy Spirit. I didn't do a regular devotion, purity devotion yesterday, um, because I shared that lesson on the blog. Uh, so if you want to check that out, uh, Celebrate Freedom Discipleship Course Lesson Four. Uh, it's available on our YouTube channel and our podcast. Um, basically, it speaks on the Holy Spirit and uh, how, if we follow the Spirit, we'll, we'll avoid the works of the flesh and live a spiritual life. Um, practices like Bible study, uh, prayer, praise, and, uh, and 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 just quieting and appreciation all all are spiritual disciplines that a life in the Spirit would uh, lead you into, uh, to where you can commune with God. Um, hear his intuitions and uh, let his his conviction uh, work in your conscience. So a life in the spirit is good. It leads you into good things. It's not just a happy, happy joy, joy routine. It, uh, it leads you into repentance. And after you get set free and become a quote-unquote 100 percenter, like Bill Ham used to say, you experience the joy of your freedom. And uh, you're not tempted to fall back down uh, into the and things that you, that tripped you up. Um, for me, um, in my recovery, I only had to fall once. I had a relapse two weeks in. <laughs> After hearing Bob Costello teach on powerlessness, I decided that I was powerless and gave into my addictions. But um, after after a Friday and a Saturday night party, uh, Sunday morning came and conviction came that that was the last time I drank 
or smoke uh, ever again, and uh, or take drugs. Um, and <laughs> you know, full disclosure. Um, so yeah, after that, we we pressed into our recovery um, and surrendered all for the Lord. And ever since, we've been surrendering more and more of our life to him. You know, it's our sexual addiction and in this latest season, our food addiction as um, you know, basically, you know, you got to treat. The things that mess you up, you have to treat treat like an addiction. Um, you know, it's not just, oh, well, you know, I struggle with this. Like, yeah, well, let's stop struggling. Let's fight. Let's ask for the Lord's help and let's move on um, into the freedom that he has for us. And so that's what we do here. We encourage that, a life of Christian discipleship where we continually learn and change uh, into the person that we hope to be, the person that God created us to be. So uh, today I have to work. Um which is a good thing, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, it does mean I have to pray and uh, move along. So let's do that. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day in your kingdom. Lord, thank you so much for all you've done for us. Thank you for showing us the truth of who Jesus is. Thank you for saving us and making us new creations in Christ. Um, Lord, we pray for anyone who's listening today, uh, that they'd be encouraged, and not only that, that you would come alongside them, Lord, and bless them and heal them and um, uh, answer their prayer requests and lead them in the way they should go. Because we all need your help, Lord. And uh, I need your help too. So I pray that you'll go before me today. Open my eyes to the things you want me to see and lead me in the way I should, uh, should go. Because all I want to do is represent you and your kingdom uh, with every living moment I have on this earth. And uh, we're definitely going to need your help with that today. So, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, and we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.